Hi everyone, this is Elias Martin of CollectingJapanesePrints.com. Welcome to Woodblock Wednesday, where every Wednesday we get together and discuss Japanese prints, paintings, history, and culture. I want to just uh, welcome all of you first, and also acknowledge that this is the first Woodblock Wednesday in a couple of weeks. I've missed uh, doing them. I've been busy with preparations for my latest exhibition, and then I acquired a large group of prints from Japan, and I've been sorting those things out as well. And, um, and also today I'm coming to you a little earlier, so for all of you who like to watch me live, my apologies. But I have a, an appointment in a little bit, and I thought I'd just do this really quick before my appointment. So to, today's Woodblock uh, Wednesday is dedicated to something that Woodblock print enthusiasts, enthusiasts, connoisseurs, collectors, scholars, all of the above, enjoy doing. We love to compare prints, impression from impression. So if, you, if you, you're ever ever able to have two different impressions of the same design, it's, it's really kind of neat to compare them both to see the nuances in the differences and also the similarities. I've also been asked by several collectors to do a video on later versus earlier impressions. And because I just acquired um, something just like that, I thought, well, why not dedicate today's video to this topic? So today we're going to uh, look at two woodblock prints by uh, Yumeji. Uh, and Yumeji is an interesting character. He worked during the Meiji period as well as the Taisho period. And he's one of those early artists of this period of the 20th century that uh, was kind of, uh, he, he, he wasn't a Sosaku Hanga artist per se, in the sense that he didn't carve his own prints and print his own designs. However, he did connect to the zeitgeist of the time, the, the spirit of the time, the sort of the, uh, the, the enthusiasm that woodblock print artists had to, to really command their own work. And so Yumeji actually started his own shop and sold his prints. He also produced a lot of ephemera and other, uh, and you could call him a designer. He designed, you know, stationary book uh, covers, fonts for books. He designed um, some scarves and other things like that, as well as being a painter. And he opened up his own shop to sell his prints and his designs. And so that was very much in line with the Sosaku Hanga artists of the day, in the sense that they were interested in producing work uh, that that satisfied their own tastes, and they wanted to be connected to their own destiny. So they didn't want a publisher hiring them and producing work for the publisher and having the publisher decide what happens to the work and how it's sold. The, these artists were interested in doing all of it themselves, and Yumeji did, did that very thing. He started his own shop, he created a, his own designs, and he had artisans carve and print his prints. Um, but, you know, in this case, I have an early Yumeji print and a later printing of the same design. And so I thought, why not compare and show you both? So without further ado, let's go to the table, or actually in this case, the top of my print cabinet and have a look. So I'm going to back up so you can kind of see there. They both prints are on very similar size paper. And this, this is the early version. It's a print, um, as I said, by Yumeji. And I should give you his dates. He was born in 1884, and he passed away in 1934. And so he, he died relatively young, and he worked during the late Meiji um, and Taisho period, uh, mostly. And this print is, is a print that was done in about 1914. The dates are in the in the books uh, in the references nineteen fourteen through nineteen sixteen, and the print is known by the title "Nude Woman" or "Nude Woman's Bust," and um, the I've read in different places different things, but possibly 
this design was produced for Yumeji's shop. Um, uh, and that was, that's when, you know, he opened his own studio and selling his own prints. And that, that studio was called Minatoya. And this particular impression was done slightly after that, about 1916. And it bears the Yanagiai, um, yeah, let me say, Yanagi, uh, ya, um, the, the seal for the, the publisher. Now, I have not been able to find a earlier version of this print. So if some of you out there know of the earlier version um, and it has the circular earlier version, send me an email and send me a picture. That would be great. Um, I, I suspect this might be the first state, but I don't know. I can't tell. I, I haven't been able to find an early impression. The but the, the the print is interesting because it depicts a nude woman, and at this period in time in Japan's art history, you really didn't see this type of subject. It's kind of a Western idea, actually. You typically would see a nude in a Japanese subject, um, uh, or this nude in, uh, as depicted in, in Japanese art, specifically where you would find a nude. So, for example, at the spa or getting ready, uh, you know, or going, getting ready to go to bed, something that suggests the daily activities of a person. This print, however, shows nothing of the, of the case. So this pr print only shows a woman nude looking out kind of in a forlorn sort of way with this kind of a really powerful expression that draws the viewer in, but you don't see a bedroom, you don't see a bath or a spa. And so really, there's no explanation for her nudity. And in some cases, you could look at that as a, a very strange, not strange, but controversial context for uh, a nude. And so I would imagine that kind of... Um, sparked a little bit of controversy for this design. Certainly, it, it sparked interest. And so it reads, though it's a Japanese woman, the subject, the way that it's portrayed, it reads very Western. Uh, so that it's interesting to note. The other thing that I think is very uh, fascinating about this particular design is that it was actually carved by Onchi. You know, all, a lot of you have heard me speak about Onchi over the... Um, over the year or so that we've been doing this uh, this Woodblock Wednesday. He's one of my favorite artists. And one of the reasons I wanted to feature this design is because it's an early work. It, it's a collaboration between Onchi and Yumeji. Yumeji was not really a great Woodblock uh, print carver. There are some designs and some prints that are known of Yumeji's that was hand carved. But they're very rough, and um, and they were amateurish, and they were really mostly for cards and and things that weren't meant to be sold in his shop. In this case, this design was created by Yumeji, but carved by Onchi. I don't know if Onchi actually printed the work. Probably not, but at the very least, it was carved by this um, Sosaku Hanga master. So... I want to zoom in so you can kind of appreciate the printing and the carving of the, the, the design. And what one thing that you can see, and there's, I'm sorry that there's this shadow that I'm casting. The background is silver mica that's printed. Um, and then the, the underneath the silver is like a pink background, which is quite beautiful and quite soft. So that, that's, that's really wonderful. And here you have the, the, the seal for the, the publisher. And again, I've not been able to find the earlier version of this if, if it in fact exists. So if someone knows about it, please send me an email. But today I'll also compare a later printing. This was probably done in the late 80s um, by a publisher who clearly had the original blocks, 
but there were changes in the blocks. And so you'll see they added the Umeji seal and his signature. Um, and then there, here's the information of the publisher uh, when it was produced, how many were done, and there's some more information here. This has all been added later. These were added by separate blocks, as was the signature and seal. But, you, uh, you know, just to step back, you'll see there is a big difference. The, the woman's face um, does not read as as emotional. She, in this case, looks a little bit sort of just, I don't know, emotionless and just sort of caught in thought. Um, and for 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 people who understand Yumeji's work, his work has a lot of emotion. He was really fond of showing um, um, or producing designs of, of of women crying and men about to leave out going out into the to war or to or as fishermen going out on a dangerous um um you know catch and so uh, there there's always some emotion in Yumeji prints and in this case you don't see that she's just sort of very stoic just kind of looking um you know maybe slightly pensive just looking out to the side and if we look at the the earlier version we 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 really get a sense for something that might be troubling her or or, or she's really caught in in a deep contemplation with uh with emotion so it's pretty neat to see the earlier printing versus the the later one the also the the, the key difference is you don't get the sense of the printing is not as darker and you don't see, it's not as um it seems very flat here and when you look at the woman's hair here there's over printings of blue and darker uh, grays and almost a black and here you don't see the blues you don't see those those darker tones it, it's basically a light gray and a darker gray and the other thing is the color's a little bit different here it's it's a bluish gray, and this is a little bit lighter. In the in her makeup, for example, her lipstick is a brighter red, and here it, it's a darker red, and around her lips it's a little bit lighter. There's also some pink on her neck, um, and then also right there in her breast there's some pink. The that is gone on her body, you know the pink there. So those little nuances on the earlier printing are gone. And, and quite frankly, for any woodblock print enthusiast, those little touches really make impressions and really make the print. The other difference I wanna point out is the shading around the figure. You know, it's you, you see this, it's just almost like a break in the block there. It's there, but when you, when you, when you see it in person here uh, on the earlier impression, you really get a sense that the shadings almost reads like charcoal on paper. You almost kind of get the sense of Onchi drawing this out. And, you know, it's it's interesting. There's these cross hatchings um, that create the shadows. That is something we see in Onchi's own work later. Um, this is 1914, so Onchi was in art school. Um, this is in his Sukahaya days with uh, Tanaka, Kyokichi, and Fujimori. And so, you know, we see in this design, um, obviously collaboration between Onchi and Yumeji, but we do, we do see Onchi's sort of style breaking through um, Yumeji's um, sort of subject. So now I'm just going to zoom in so you can enjoy both prints. And my apologies for the shadows. I'll try to walk around. I have the, the blinds open for a little bit better light. And then of course the earlier version. So I'm often asked, you know, if they're later versions, why buy the earlier version, which usually is a lot more money. And in this case, it is. This is a $4,500 retail um, print, and this is maybe $500 in Tokyo today. 
And the, the difference is obviously the history of it. You, you get a connection of the history, um, but you also get a connection of the artist truly working um, in a way that the artist intended. So Yumeji and Onchi, you know, put enough uh, effort to create this impression to satisfy, uh, you know, their, their artistic eye. And in this case, this was only satisfying to the publisher which, you know, of course, the publisher's real only concern was the, the sale of the print. And so this is much more commercial. There's a lot less work that is involved in making the print. And here, there's a lot more effort. And you could see the artists themselves um, at work, which is important, I, I say. Now, is this print... Um, not beautiful it is I, I do see a beauty in this print and in fact i bought it but i i think i bought it first of all to connect it to the original or i would never have bought it because when i see this print it's really a shadow of this and would only remind me of the original and so this is why i have both but for a lot of us who don't want to spend you know thousands of dollars and in some cases tens of thousands of dollars on some shinhanga prints reproductions are a, a viable solution to that desire of getting that print the only issue is that if you spend you know a thousand dollars on a reproduction for example of a katundo print or something that's money down the drain you will never recover that print i mean the the the, the money for, for that print and it's just a decorative design. Whereas if you put a, you know, $5,000 or $6,000 on the Katundo print, you'll get that back when you're ready to sell. And in fact, you'll get it back plus some. So there are some rewards for those of us who could buy the original uh, printing. So I just wanted to throw that out there. And when at all possible, I recommend buying the earlier originals uh, versus the later ones. But of course, you know, the later ones do serve their purpose. So I, I wanted to include this in the conversation. So I'm going to zoom in again on both prints so that you could see. And it looks like I'm running a little late to my appointment. So um, I'm just going to zoom in and then say goodbye. So there they are. Uh, I want to thank all of you for joining me today. I see that I'll, uh, quite a few of you uh, just joined me at, right at the end. I encourage all of you to watch the video from the beginning. Um, it was a pleasure to share two wonderful impressions of uh, Yumeji's nude from 1914. And, um, you know, look out uh, if you haven't had a chance uh, to go on, on my website, uh, collectingjapaneseprints.com. I have a lot of great prints, a lot of books there, and I'm doing an update very soon, uh, probably in the next uh, couple of weeks. So, you know, have a, uh, a look at that. And I'll, of course, I'll make announcements for that. So thank you very much for joining me, and I will see you next week on Woodblock Wednesday. Bye-bye.